And we are back. We're back, Bumble Bitches. Episode 35 of Season 2 of the To Be Better Podcast. Yeah. Recorded live in front of a studio audience on Patreon. <sighs> uh, so, for those of you who don't know, our Patreon gets early access to what we are recording. They get to listen to it while we record. We're going to yeah. be leaving it up for 24 hours. After 24 hours, we'll be deleting it so that you know people who don't get a chance to watch it just going to have to wait. Um, we have a little bit of housekeeping. Okay. And good. then some conversation and some emails. Sounds good. Um, I am very much looking forward to this little competition, the Bake Off. <clears throat> yeah, because you get food out of it? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I just want to let you guys know, because I'm sure that Danish and Apple Fritt are in the chat, just know that I've already put a lot of stuff in an Amazon cart. Yes. <clears throat> I went hard this morning, yeah. so game on. Somebody, Jenna, I think it was actually who said it, but somebody was like, it was Jenna, said that we should do it so mm -hmm. that the husband have to be the hype man. And whoever hypes up the woman the most is the one that wins the food challenge. I'm like, you guys don't want to do that. That's an unfair advantage. I don't think you guys will understand the extremes that I will go to for my woman. Like, we're talking like full-on sports face paint with yeah. like a beer helmet and a big number one fucking thumb finger thing. You know what I mean? Like oh. my wife. Right. <laughs> yeah. Brownies. You know what I mean? Like I'll, I'll go hard. You guys just don't want to see that. Yeah. I'm willing to go like Dallas Cowboys cheerleader for you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Game on. Um, Kendra asked how the garden setup is going. Uh, it's going. It is currently on hold. Uh, it's been a run around morning. a get ready morning. And now we're here. So I have to finish spray painting the outside of the troughs. I love that rose gold color. Yeah, it came out actually came out pretty good. Right. Even with me spraying painting over stickers and bubbles. Zero <laughs> um, prep work. Um, yeah, no, I'm not with these nails. I'm not trying to scrape that off. And I was not getting ready to walk inside. Are you kidding me? In that heat? <laughs> but I had to finish spray painting them. And then we have to line the inside of them with that weed blocker the weed barrier weed barrier that's what it is rocks yard debris i have so much yard debris get the kids to rake it all up toss it into the bins and then put soil down over top of it yeah. i'm gonna plant my mullein <clears throat> that i got sent yeah i got some herbs that i picked up and now i have to pick up i got seeds from the strawberries that we bought the other day we need to get you heirloom seeds what heirloom like tomato seeds? No, heirloom seeds. They're called heirloom. They are non-GMO modified oh. actual seeds that when new plants, right, you can re-harvest mm -hmm. seeds from all the things that are coming. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's not scientifically fucked with. Okay. So they're more expensive than normal seeds, but you're getting food and not food-like products from Should it. order that tonight, though. Yeah, I will. Okay. I will. <clears throat> Thank you. You're welcome. Gardening is going well. Um, so I want to, I want to talk a little bit about the dating game right now and in, in the current state of affairs. I'm not going to say his name. Is this house cleaning or this is moving on. We're I, moving on. I don't have anything else to talk about with house cleaning. Oh, we can talk about these. Oh, okay. I, I don't know why I'm so impressed by these things. I'm impressed by them. <clears throat> and we've had them for a while. These are DJI microphones. They're actually just wireless lav mics. And I found out that this Little guy plugs into my phone and the receiver that's in this box just automatically connects to my iPhone. So we have really good microphones that can be talked in mm -hmm. from here while I'm way over there recording. And we've been sitting on these since we went to St. Augustine. Almost a year ago. Yep. Yeah. I, I've convinced Dakota to buy them. Um, I ordered another one for me so that you and I can both carry these everywhere we go so that we have better microphones on our phones for when we make TikToks. <clears throat> I'm a little late to the game, guys, but I'm pretty <laughs> impressed by these DJI mics. They are really nice. You have anything else? Um, No, not really. Okay. So a friend of mine is now on the Facebook dating app. Mm -hmm. And this morning, while talking to him, trying to be very vague, <clears throat> he told me that that Facebook tried to match him with somebody who is in their very early 20s who has six kids and works at like Walmart or Wendy's or something. And we were talking about the dating game <clears throat> and how horrible it is 
and the cesspool that it has become. And I was like, well, next time you run across some things mm -hmm. like that, screenshot them and send them to me because Peaches and I wanted to have a conversation about single moms in the dating game. And this would be a great opportunity to have a back and forth about what it is to date somebody who has kids or to be a, a woman with kids in the dating game. Mm -hmm. And I just want to read some of these screenshots. These are the, the accounts that he came across in the last half hour. In the last half hour. Okay. I, I asked him to send them to me. And when he started sending them, I'm like, yeah, good morning. He's like, nope, those are the ones that I just came across in the last half hour. <clears throat> so some of these are really bad. Um, we'll start. I'm not going to show or, or do anything like that. I'm just going to read the, everything has a description, right? You're supposed to give an about me. Right. That's supposed to sell <clears throat> you to the people that are there instead of just mm -hmm. posting a thirst trappy photo hoping to get a swipe. Right. The first one says, who trina, T-R-Y-N-A, be my rebound. That's that's the, the dating description. That's the description. That's it. That's it. one sentence. Question mark. Who trina, trying to be trying to be a rebound. Instant. Can't do it. Trina is not a word. Right. Trying to is. If you type like that, or instead of saying going, you type gone. Instant rejection. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next one says, <clears throat> if you don't know what you want, please swipe left. That's a fair statement. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Dating for intent. If you just want to fuck, please swipe left. I'm too old for BS. Dot, dot, dot. With all that said, if you're looking for your best friend, that you're hoping becomes more dot, 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 then let's see if we vibe dot, dot, dot. <clears throat> I don't know anything about you. I, I right. don't, why would I swipe on that? What, where is their description? Does that, in, does that, is that appealing to you? No. Okay. I, you want a car with some tires and an engine? I got that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. That's, that's how that sounds to that's, me. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, this one says, starts off with an emoji. Okay. So we're already at a disadvantage here. Yeah. She speaks emoji, and she's in her 40s. Okay. Speaks with emojis. Emoji. Check the distance because I'm trying to actually hang out. I'm a below-the-knee amputee, and if that makes you feel some type of way, then that's a you problem. Super negative. Whatever. Right. I, I would have just accepted <clears throat> below-the-knee amputee. Right. Like M My kids are grown. I pay my own bills. Don't need a place to stay. Another emoji. Okay, hang on. I need to pause. Okay, so kids are grown. That's good information. Absolutely, because if somebody doesn't want kids. Right. Right. Also, yeah. Pay my own bills. Well, bitch, so do I. Yeah, you're in your 40s. I, I would fucking hope so I would so hope at this point. so. Right. I sure hope it does. You remember that? that <laughs> the guy was like, road work ahead. Well, I sure hope it does. <laughs> <laughs> Um, don't need a place to stay emoji. I'm just trying to run around with no worries and kiss under the stars. If we click emoji emoji, FYI, I'm kind of, kind of the tomboy type and can be a sarcastic, sarcastic, smart ass at times emoji. Heh. So the next one says, at least this one's honest in the beginning. Okay. I can't really answer this question because it's so biased. Who would describe themselves negatively? Then they use an upside down question mark. I don't get that. I don't even know how the hell you do that. I, I, um, I've it's been a thing in Spanish. Okay. When, when you when you speak Spanish, when the rest of this is all caps. Okay. Well, hang on. Can you repeat what that just said? I can't really answer this question because it's so biased. Who would describe themselves negatively? Well, it doesn't ask you to describe yourself negatively, does it? I don't know. I don't have, I've never even looked at this. These right. These are screenshots but, from somebody. No, no, no. I know. I'm just, I'm processing that sentence because like I, I can, I can pinpoint some negative attributes about myself. Well, that's because you have accountability and self-awareness. That's why you're a catch. Oh my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> that's just, like, even for job interviews, I would go into a job interview and say, all of this is really dope about me. But like, hey, I would feel kind of shitty not letting you know this, but this is something that I'm working on. Controlling my face when I talk to people. like, <laughs> Yeah, definitely don't have a face for customer service. You want to keep me in the yeah. back room somewhere. Right. Right. So I'm working on it maybe in the future, but for now, I think that this would definitely be the best position for me. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, all caps. All right, all caps. Yelling o now. Oh, 
Oh. Just the letter. Please don't swipe right if you have dot, 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 dot. Red flag emoji. A girl. Red flag emoji. A wife. Red flag emoji. A crazy baby mama. Red flag emoji. A situationship. Red flag emoji. A one-year-old. Dot, dot, dot. There are exceptions. Red flag emoji. A temper problem. Red flag emoji. A drug problem. Red flag emoji. A drinking problem. This this goes. I'm not done yet. That, I just I just hit the halfway mark. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Red flag I, emoji. I, hang on, you're reading this list, and I am formulating this woman in my mind, and she just sounds controlling. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like she's made a lot of really bad decisions in her life. She's trying to rectify that by telling people what not to look for in her, or like what she's not looking for. I, I mean, that's fair. At least she's being honest. But this does not scream, hey. I, I check right. all these and you're the one for me. But it, it also doesn't <clears> sound <throat> like somebody of sound mind dating. Like you sound like you need to work on yourself a little bit if that's how you're presenting yourself. Imagine walking into a room with potential sooners and going, all right, if anybody has a child, walk out of here. Right. Put a finger up if. <laughs> right. It reminds me of that pop the balloon yeah. based on appearance. Yeah. <clears throat> so the bigger question here okay. is the dating game is such a cesspool that this is actually needed to be typed out for people on a dating app. This must be such commonplace interaction. Oh, I believe it. That this chick felt the need to type all of this out. Okay. So red flag, a sex addiction. Okay. Red flag emoji, a person, or should I say people in a poly couple Red flag emoji, a commitment issue. Red flag emoji, a bad sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Red flag emoji, too many red flag emojis. She actually used the red flag emoji again. Red flag emoji, lie. Red flag emoji and or all of the above happy hunting face emoji. You nailed that. Then, wait, then. Oh my God, there's more. There's six more emojis. I don't speak emoji. You guys may have to translate this. Okay. For me. Praying hands. Praying hands. The thumbs up. The peace sign. The monkey covering its eyes. The monkey covering its ears. And the monkey covering its mouth. Emojis. I don't know what that means. Well, that's the see no evil, hear no <clears throat> evil, speak no evil. Right. I get that part. And well, then it was a thumbs up. It was a praying hand, thumbs up, and then the peace sign. What does that mean? I'm a pray are you, for you. Are you religious? Have a great day. Good Peace energy. Out. Woodstock 69. Like. <laughs> uh, and then hear no evil. Speak no evil. See no evil. But make it monkeys. But my, yeah, okay. Um, okay, so the next one. Okay, well, hang on. I mean, <laughs> that's a lot for me to process because you said if it is so commonplace that this has to be a thing where it needs to be typed out. That's insane. But when, when I look at the internet, I take the internet as a joke. I agree. Right. If I'm doing very serious research, I am making sure I'm vetting where I'm doing my very serious research. Right. If I am looking for a very serious long-term relationship and I know that everybody is using Tinder for fuck buddies, I'm not going to go to Tinder. Well, this is Facebook dating app. This is the dating thing on Facebook, which I didn't even know existed until my cousin moved down. I've never, I I used match.com in like 1998. Mm -hmm. So like I've never experienced Tinder. I didn't even know what the Facebook thing looked like until he handed me his phone earlier and was like, do not fucking swipe. I'm like, okay. He's like, but look at this. Cause he showed me somebody that tried to match with him. Cause he's gotten some really fucking hideous things. Um, and then when we started having that conversation, I was like, I, I, I am, I, I've all, I'm already grateful, right? Like I know what I have. I know what we have and I know the relationship and like, this is not common and I fucking understand that. I didn't realize how bad the dating pool was because I don't see the dating apps. I mm-hmm. only see the videos and the conversations and the emails that people send us. The fact that all of that has to be put into a dating profile says that she makes really bad decisions has had a lot of really horrible past experiences, has taken zero accountability, and the dating game is that fucked up, that that needs to be stated. Well, hasn't healed from it either. Yeah. Do you need an air bubble? Yeah, I've been thinking about that, but I don't have a knife, and all of your knives are beyond my scope of thinking until it's too late. 
Okay. So the next one oh. <clears throat> says, this is, a, this is somebody who's also in their mid-40s. Okay. I work and chill with my three young kids. Very first sentence. In our 40s? Yep. Heart emoji. Work and chill with my three young kids. Heart emoji. I don't have, I'm sorry, not I, don't have time for disrespect or a liar, L-I-E-R, 100% emoji. To be honest and save your time, I'm only into chocolate men with another emoji. I don't even know what this emoji is. It looks like a pencil eraser or maybe, oh, it's a, it's a chocolate bar. It's a chocolate bar. I had to zoom in to tell that it's a chocolate bar. Um, please don't bother me if you don't have a job vehicle or your own place. And then her profile picture actually has a picture of her kid in it, but has the emoji over the kid's face. So you can't see the kid's face. So good on her for that. Um, he told me that this morning it tried to pair him with a, a woman who is currently going through a divorce and had twins recently. And her profile picture was her holding her infant twins. Which is a, that's a problem for me anyways. You guys, if you follow us on TikTok, you know how we feel about your kids being put on the internet. <clears throat> yep. We all, and if you follow the podcast, you know that we've talked in depth that there are men out there who will get with single women just to have access to the children. And they know that single women are fucking damaged. And like, in a lot of cases, desperate. Yes. 20, early 20s. He gave me the age. I don't want to say the age. because Right. With six kids. A single mom with six kids in her early 20s. And, and by early, I mean younger than 25. Working at a, a, a entry-level position somewhere. I, I don't understand how we got here. It is failure after failure after failure from parent to child to parent to child. Yeah. There, I, I don't know. The selfishness increased and the lack of compassion. Do you, parents fucking up and standards not being upheld for men and women both. We used to fucking court each other. Women used to act like women and men, most men, would act like men. I don't know. <clears throat> Most women would act like women. There was a worry of etiquette and manners. And if I'm alone with a man, my virginity could be called into question. Like <clears throat> promiscuity was normalized. <clears throat> Sleeping around was normalized. Glamorized. Glamorized. The sanctity of. I think women, just women having sanctity. I mean, it has always been an issue, but I think it's devolved even more. We're seeing more single mothers at much younger ages. There's a desperateness within women to feel loved and appreciated, just like there is in men. <clears throat> and for women, there's much more dire consequences, like being a single mom with six kids. Right. <clears throat> it's sad. So how do we correct this then? From where we are right now in the current state of affairs mm -hmm. with dating, if you were able to somehow magically control the dating pool, you've now pH balanced it. What mm -hmm. are your steps to pH balance other than muriatic acid and bleach? Because it needs a lot of that. How do we correct the current state of affairs with the dating game? Also, I fixed your cap. Thank you. Setting standards and not having sex with somebody the first time you meet them. What does that look like? Because the date, and, and I ask that because dating culture is mm -hmm. swipe culture now. It is. And it's become hookup culture and not about dating for longevity. So where does that, that correction start? Does it start with faith? Does it start with shaming people for, for like, we go back to slut shaming, like for um, men and women? How how do we... Yes, I would love that. Yeah? Because I don't want to see a dude's ass hanging out of Daisy Duke shorts when I'm walking through Walmart. I don't want to see a woman's nipple through a mesh shirt while I'm at Publix. Like, I think that shame is necessary for people to get in line sometimes. I, I agree with that. I think that embarrassment and pain are the best teachers on the planet. Yes. Um... It starts with people restricting access to them. 
What do you mean? Develop self-worth. Okay. Don't be desperate. If you feel desperate, you probably are. He told me this morning that he doesn't think he wants to actually start dating again. And part of it is, so he's very Mm self-aware, but part of it is that he doesn't want to get involved. Is it working? Mm Mm-hmm. Um, he doesn't want to get involved in the dating game because of the way the dating game is, but he specifically said that he has found peace and his solitude at being at home. He enjoys being there. You mm-hmm. know, him and his dog is no different than a crazy cat lady, but right. him and his dog mm-hmm. watch TV together and he smokes and they just, he just vibes. Like he's mm-hmm. happy. His his life is very peaceful. And every time he meets a woman, it immediately brings stress into his life. And there's drama and there's chaos and there's negativity and drama from exes and like, there's not a value being added to his life by having a woman there. Right. Because of hookup culture now. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> I I don't even think he's interested in hookup culture. Right. I mean, I wouldn't be. Right. And, and he's a good man. Right. He's a business owner. Like he's got his shit together mm-hmm. and he is so far removed from wanting to be in the dating game because of what it is that he just, he's content being alone. So now, and he's not a dad and he would be a good dad. He's a good man. Mm-hmm. Now what? And he's not, he's not willing to date a woman with kids. And and like that's one of the things that when he put in his profile, he was like, you know, 25 to 45, must have a job, no kids. Yeah. And like it still pairs him with women who have kids, but like the people that he is getting paired with now aren't even in our area. Like one of those was 300 miles away. Like the dating game is that fucked up. And I don't know if that just means that our area is a high population for young people to, to right. be having kids. But if that's the case, that also speaks to something. And the reason I asked you earlier about how we correct this, <clears throat> do you remember ever watching a movie where a woman's like, I'm divorced, no man will ever want me again because I'm divorced? Yes. That was a thing for a long fucking time. I was time. terrified of that. And then, you know, it, then it became about kids. Well, mm-hmm. if I have kids and he leaves me, nobody's going to ever want a woman who has kids because they're not his. And now that's not a thing. And like you said, being left alone with a man, like you know, your your um, character could be called into question if that was the case. And mm-hmm. like we know that the shit has happened throughout the history, right? Um, but it was still frowned upon. Mm-hmm. So like even though those things were happening in secret, it was not just thrown out into the world where right. women are 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 promiscuous and sleeping with everybody that they can, right? And, it, and 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 if men had multiple kids, they still took care of their bastards. It wasn't right. like they were just up and leaving. Right. Yeah, there was judgment towards fathers who didn't do that. Yeah, I, I actually think that a lot of this comes down to men not being present in the homes anymore. I agree. I, I believe that a lot of this boils down to the strong independent that doesn't need no man. Mm-hmm. Well, their kids do. Right. I believe that kids need a male and female, 100%. masculine and feminine role in the home. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that when you don't have that balance, it becomes problematic. And we know that because studies have shown that that children do better or just as good, not better, I'm sorry, that was a, mis- a misspoke that they do just as good in a single parent, single father household mm-hmm. as they do in a dual parent household. And that's not the case when it's just the mother. Right. And that could come to neglect and abuse because we know that mothers abuse their children in higher rates than, than fathers do. I think it comes down to emotional control. And logic thinking. Why emotional control? Because I fucking agree with that. The the psychological abuse is, is right. nastiness. Right. So why is that mm-hmm. then? Because me and a lot of women like me who grew up in tumultuous households where mom grew up in a tumultuous household and grandma grew up in a tumultuous household, there is a long line of zero emotional regulation. So that is decades upon decades of perfect, perf- oh my gosh, that is decades upon decades of perfected chaos. Okay. Learn behaviors. Right. That's so, been built upon to right. perfect. Yeah. I mean, that I, makes I, sense. Until I went to therapy and got my <clears throat> shit together and learned how to regulate my emotions, I, I was a very scary woman. I would yell about shit. I would scream about things like... I, I was very unhinged and I feel really bad. I, I missed my kids' baby years because of my emotions. I was so wrapped up in my own bullshit and trying to get my life together and arguing with their father and arguing with other people and 
dealing with drama and he said she said and lying about things to make me look better in situations like it was a lot of just fucked up manipulation and gossip how much of that do you equate to emotional maturity because you were young do you think lack of of emotional maturity do you think that played a role in in all of okay yeah i want to come back to that because that's very relevant to the conversation that we're going to have Mm mm-hmm um, I want to point out that I know there are going to be people, there are women specifically, who are going to listen to everything that I stated before you just said what you said that are going to be all up in their feelings, and they're going to be super butthurt about all of it. This, right. The, the, the statistics, the emotional manipulation that you brought up, and yeah. they're going to be super in their feelings about it and mad that we just said all of that shit. The women out there who are good mothers, who are doing the right thing by their children and are single mothers that are mm-hmm. fucking thriving and doing right by their children mm-hmm. aren't up in their feelings right now. Right, they get it. So if you are feeling any type of way or triggered about the stats that we just said or what we did, you need to fucking evaluate your guilt. Mm-hmm. Full chest. Full chest. Because I reevaluated my guilt and I became a better mother because of it. Um, so I, I want to segue back to what you were saying, but it's going to lead into the other conversation. You, you told me... Um, so you had somebody between your ex and me. Correct. And you told me that between your ex and the guy that you dated for a very short time in between, that you had a mental breakdown because you were a single mom who was in the, you know, two kids. Um, you were fucking struggling to get by. You had choices to make of whether or not you were going to eat at all or eat ramen. Like, Am I going to put gas in my car? Or am <clears throat> I going to buy diapers? Right. Like... So as a single mom with two kids that lived in that chaos and that fear, um, what, what was that like? A mess. Um, I was crying every day. I, I couldn't handle two children crying at me. I would try everything to soothe them. And I had people in my corner who weren't in my corner. Does that make sense? It, it does to me because we've had these conversations, but I would like you to elaborate. For so I, I had people in my life who were supporting me out of their own selfish needs to feel like they were important. So their advice wasn't really advice. It was just advice to control me to keep them under their thumb. Or it were it was people who were adding on to my depression like oh yeah fuck that i don't know how you're going to deal with that right that sucks let's go get drunk can we talk about that selfishness and the need to keep others under thumb to feel power yeah yeah because we see a lot of that we do um and we were we're watching animal kingdom mm-hmm. dude i i'm i'm emotionally raw right now that show's fucking me up okay uh, so full disclosure, I, I'm going to beat around the bush because this will be live and I don't want a lot of, of that getting out, but mm-hmm. watching Smurf interact with the kids and yes, it's a TV show. There are women out there who treat their sons and daughters very, very wrong, very poorly. And there is a lot of emotional manipulation and psychological abuse in that show between that mother and son and those, those, those kids, young men, they're, they're adults they're men at this point but. with children and lives and, and still she's got them under thumb they look like eight-year-old children when she speaks to them right and they're in their 20s 30s 40s like it's insane to see how trauma and triggers will affect somebody you can see it in dairy a lot yeah yeah like and fully we're aware it's a television show right these guys are doing a very good job at playing their characters they are they're they they're actors mm-hmm. it, it is scripted but I, I have lived a lot of the shit that is in that show. And because I understand that, we have had a lot of meaningful conversations where we've paused and we've got to learn more about each other's past. Yeah. Because <clears throat> do you remember when we were programming dates for people and we were like, you go and have a history date. You have to tell your partner something that they don't know about mm-hmm. your past. And it doesn't matter if you've been together for 30 years. You could have a song pop up and it could remind you of a time that you were in your living room and there were people drinking and somebody danced Mm -hmm. and that's not something that you would ever think about again until that one song comes up during a conversation. And then you're like, Oh, I just had this memory, right? You are not going to ever share your entire existence with another human being. It's not possible. Right. You you know, subconscious thoughts come up. So intrusive thoughts. Absolutely. Like, so those conversations are necessary when you have history dates that allows mm -hmm. your person to bond and us doing the television shows that we watch and having the pause conversations and, 
what should be a 45, 50 minute episode turns into a two and a half yeah. hour process because we're talking right. and now it's two o'clock in the morning and we should have been in bed an hour ago, two hours ago, right? Maybe five hours ago. It becomes a whole <laughs> ordeal. Yeah. But understanding each other on a, a deeper level because of those conversations, how do we break that? Because the, break the, the Smurfs have created a the, web the Darians mm -hmm. and the the Baz guy or whatever, and they're all fucking damaged people. And then you see it with the daughter who's being neglected by everyone but Pope at this point in the show. Yeah. All of them are going to have lifelong trauma. You see it between Julia to Jay. His character is also all fucked up because of the things that happened with Smurf and Julia. <clears throat> and These, then from Smurf to her mother. This is the perfected chaos, as you put right. it. So where does that healing start? Because you have to accept that things have happened in your life and you have to be viciously aware of the manipulation. And when you're aware of that, you don't want to associate, associate with people who bring that kind of chaos into your life because um, it's just living in trauma all right. over again. And if you don't deal with that, how are you going to break that generational trauma? H how would you? Okay. So I'm just going to answer the first question you asked me. Yeah, Cause I'm, I'm, okay. I'm going, so I my brain is doing its thing. My, my experience with breaking all of that and the most painful aspect was acknowledging that I was a shitty person for, for being manipulative okay. and vindictive. And I was hurting people in my search for validation and love because I am the most important thing. My wants and needs are more important than anything else. And I don't know if people outside, like in reality, viewed me this way, but I very much viewed myself as the one year dater. I would be with somebody for a year. The rose colored glasses would fall off. The obsession phase would end. I also have borderline. So would, would you say that you were a narcissist? And everything that you just said, would, do, do you believe that you had? I was definitely higher in my narcissistic traits. Yeah. I believe that narcissism is a trauma response. I, I believe it too. I, yeah. I do. Um, I don't believe people are just born. Right. I, I believe that a lot of that trauma begins in utero with the mother system and how her environment around it. Yeah. Right. But like how her nervous system is reacting because it's all attached. Well, that's been proven. So if the body holds trauma, that fetus is going to hold trauma. Yeah. Well, and if it's a female fetus. Right. The eggs are also developed in the mother. The eggs that you have are, are traumatized. Right. So your grandkids are going to have lingering trauma right and that's been proven through holocaust survivors right um that book was it didn't begin with you that really fucked me up yeah. i was not prepared for any of that shit because i blame a lot of my childhood trauma on my parents mm -hmm. not realizing how much my mom went through and how and all how of that all trickled of down right <clears throat> so then what's the step to healing because there's a lot of people who were who are in these situations we get the emails and we get the super chats mm -hmm. how do i cut off a shitty parent there's a guilt there because we are told you're supposed to love your family no, no matter what. We're told by our abusers that no one will ever love you like I do. Right. No one will ever look out for you like your mother does. Right? Like all of those, you're not good enough. You can't do this on your own. You need me. Right. Right? Like all of that is, it's programming. Uh, so you want to know my answer to this? I do actually. My answer is I relive my trauma. I have to remind myself why I cut them off because I will sit there in that guilt and fester. Please don't cry. I can <laughs> see your lip going. I'm trying. If you need to get it out, get it out. I can't jujitsu hold you in this chair, but you can come sit in my lap if you need to. I'm just going to read emails and, and she's going to be in my lap the whole time. This would be a great episode. See, look at that. It, it works. It totally works. Can you guys hear? Okay. Say something, babe. Saying something. Can you guys hear something? Can you could you hear that? Because this works. I totally derailed that conversation. I'm sorry. It's okay. It works. <laughs> They're like, yep, can you hear? <laughs> this podcast is emotionally exhausting. Yeah, it fucking is. Oh my god, my back hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I feel it in my rib cage. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. So back to the podcast. We cut I, that. Yeah. There's a whole lot being cut there that you guys are not going to get to see. Um, I've got another screenshot from my buddy. Make that two because I just got another one. 
This one says mother of five. Um, she's in her very early 30s. 5'11 and up. So you must be at least that tall to ride the ride. Uh, two emojis. Read my bio, two emojis. <clears throat> Here, looking for a friend to see where it goes. Hopefully it builds towards something. <coughs> Please don't write me wasting my time. I don't have time for kid games. Don't write me if you are far. Don't write me if you do not own your own place or car. If you are interested in getting to know me and not on little boy stuff, feel free to write me 30 and up. So you have to own <coughs> own your place and your car. You can't rent to be with that one. Uh, okay. <clears throat> this one is almost 40. I am a single mother of two, full custody of both my babies. My boy is nine and my girl is six. I don't have a lot of free time, so please don't waste it. I love being on the water, and yes, I have a boat. I believe humor is very important. You have a boat? Um, who the fuck are you, Will Ferrell? And I'm on a boat, motherfucker. <laughs> I boats don't, and hoes. I, I don't, boats I, and hoes. How is that... Where in that? Okay, so how do you write a intelligent, interesting description of yourself for a dating app? Wouldn't you want to put your interests? Right. So I would, I would put my name. I would just do a little blurb about me. I love to make people smile. I choose my own happiness. I'm a little judgmental sometimes, but we'll laugh about it. It's okay. Like, yeah. I, I would describe myself and I would list my interests. I like going hiking. I like going kayaking. I prefer to be, if we're inside, I would like to be watching a movie and not just being lazy, lazy. Like, if we're being lazy, I want to have quality time with you. Um... Gardening. Um, I, I feel the need because of the text message I just got to say that this is not us picking on women. If no. it was a woman sending me these screenshots of men, I would be just as critical about men as I am about women in the dating app thing. Oh, I would love to see some from men. I, I mean, you. I'm sure that you have enough women in here that, that could fucking send you screenshots and we can do that on the next episode. I'm here for that. I would love that. Um, um, Patreon. <laughs> guys... If anybody wants to create a random Tinder account and just send us screenshots, please do it. I, I would like to have those discussions. Right. Like, I think bringing these things to the light and having these discussions will make people go, oh, damn, you're right. That is kind of stupid to put on there like that. You're starting your entire existence with another person on a negative standpoint by doing that. Right. <clears throat> so you would say... <clears throat> um. Give me the, the peaches description. The the healed oh peaches description. So it'd be... Hi, I'm Peach. Definitely starting this like a formal email because I'm uncomfortable. Would you put that in there? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's good because now there's humor. Right. Right? Okay. <laughs> I am someone who enjoys... Being inside in the AC, I like gardening. I like binge watching shows, especially if I'm emotional. It's a good way to calm me down. Slide that little nugget in there of how to handle me. Okay. And I'll put that in parentheses. You would actually write that? Yeah. Okay. Give me like two more sentences. Two more sentences. I cry at everything, so don't think you fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> and that would be a red flag for most people that don't know you. I'm just saying, like, if I read it? that, I'd be like, oh, yeah, she's a crier next. Yeah. Yeah. I just swiped left. Really? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. But I, but the, again, crying has been used and weaponized yeah. against me my entire life. Right. So I view that as problematic. Okay. You so broke that stigma with me. I, I'm glad. But it's I still view that as a thing for women. So, like, so it, that's still there. I would rephrase it to, I cry at sunsets. 
I cry when I see puppies. I cry when I'm angry. So don't take any of it personally. Okay. I think that's fair. I wouldn't put on the, oh gosh, I don't know if I would put I have kids on that description because I know men go out of their way looking for kids. So I, I don't think I would add that. I wouldn't. It, I would have conversations with somebody and test the waters to see where that goes. Right. And then if we develop further, like maybe we plan a date on the first day, I would say, hey, I have kids. I waited until I vetted you to make sure I understand if that's a deal breaker for you. I'm not going to take it personally. Right. Thanks for hanging out for me with me this evening. Adult interaction is nice. Yeah. Right? That's fair. Like. That's fair. I wonder if you can put in the dating app that you have kids mm -hmm. so that the dating app knows, but the world doesn't know unless they put on there no kids. Yeah. Because that would filter in a way that doesn't put your, your kid information out there. I don't know how this works. I right. honestly I don't know have how never looked either. at any of this. So if that's a thing, that would be really... That would be a benefit, yeah. right? That would be an asset for the dating app. And then my last sentence would be... <clears throat> what would my last sentence be? I won't get offended if you say, hey, babe, you're acting crazy because sometimes I do be crazy. <laughs> it's also a red flag. But it was a green flag first because you gave permission to say you're acting right. crazy. You know what I'd put? What? Broken man free to a good home. <laughs> that would be it. Yeah. That would be it because there's humor there. Right. There's honesty there. And I think that that would be enough to get people to talk to me. So none of your interests or? Nope. I, I would like to, I, I, I don't think that it, I need to be intriguing. Mm. I think that it needs to be just enough to make people want to talk to me because I don't want people to swipe on my appearance. Yeah. I, I don't I don't want to have somebody who wants to be with me because I'm a business owner or because I'm comfortable in life. Like, yeah. I, so, and I think that it's different for men and women, which is why I ask that because the things that you put in there mm -hmm. are all very valid to me. Mm -hmm. But things that women are looking for in men are normally the, the rule of sixes. And like yeah. none of that is important to me. So like... If I was honestly, if I was to write a bio and I had to be forthcoming, I would put in there that uh, my hobbies, I want to travel the world. I want to take pictures. I want to laugh and fucking life short. Like I don't want to, I don't, I've had enough misery. I don't want any more misery, but I think that saying that comes across as negative mm -hmm. and I don't want that. Right. I, I got to be honest, even the broken, broken man free to a good home is negative, but it's mm -hmm. funny because it plays on the whole fucking men or dogs thing. Um, and I think it's witty. But, I wouldn't swipe on that. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. it, <laughs> I would. I, I. I'm glad that I'm not on a dating app. I, yeah. I think that you're not going. And the point of all of this is, I don't think that you're ever going to get anything of sustenance, right, from a description and a bio. You're also not going to get an accurate judgment. Because, like, if I was standing in a coffee shop and I was minding my business, and I overheard you say that, I would find that funny because there's warmth in that and I can hear your voice and I can see you saying it and I can see your eyes crinkle when you're laughing. Like it's so cold on text and it can be interpreted, 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 <laughs> <laughs> interpreted <laughs> any way that person wants to take it. Right. And it would, it would. And okay. So do you think that that would speak to their mindset and finding people who could laugh at that? Because people who are negative are going to see that as a negative and probably swipe past it because of it. What do you mean? I think that misery loves company, so maybe right. I'm wrong. But I would think that somebody who saw that and goes, okay, that's funny, might swipe over it because mm -hmm. they see the sense of humor in it versus somebody who is pessimistic mm -hmm. and might see that as, oh, broken man, don't want that. Like, Yeah, but I also don't view men as dogs. So like until you said that, that's not how I equated that. Well, it was just a play on words, but yeah. Right. Free to a good home kind of right. thing. I don't know. I honestly don't, I, I don't think that I would ever get swiped on, on a dating profile. I know I would, but for the wrong reasons. Okay. So then do you think that the picture should be removed? I, I was going to actually, while you were speaking, I was waiting for a break. Cause I wanted to add into that. I don't, I don't know if I would post a photo of myself. 
Like I would want people to see how I look, but I also know how some men look at women and I don't right. I don't even want that interaction. But I, without posting myself, men are visual creatures. Right. Well, there, people like, are going to assume the worst. They will always assume the worst because there's nothing there. You could have the most flawlessly written mm -hmm. description of your life that could appeal to 99% of men out there. But without a photo, you could be right. 800 pounds and four foot tall. Like, right. That would be a problem for a lot of people. But I know with me looking the way that I look and like hearing <clears throat> you talk about me, and I know that I'm an amalgamation of things. It's not just my body. My, I have piercings. I have a tattoo on my throat. Like people are looking at me for a reason. I know a lot of people fetishize me. So I, I would never do a dating app. I, that, that negative outweighs it for me. So then how, how, how are you, obviously this is all hypothetical. You're not right. going anywhere. I, I will fucking like hold on to your ankles as you try to drag me across the house. If you ever try, I to would leave. never be able to, my ankles are so weak. I know that's why I said your ankles. <laughs> that's smart. This psychological warfare. This yeah. is, I'm planting that so that you know, it'll happen if you ever try to leave. And I'm grabbing the bad one. Good. Okay. That's a smart move. Right. It's, Tactical. Yeah. Premeditated. Um, right. <laughs> How do you, how, how would you go about it then? Because as you, as we said earlier, you said that you were a single mother of two, had real, no, nothing really going for you. You thought your right. actual dating life was over. You yeah. were still overweight at that point. I was. What would you do to try to find somebody? And, and this, this actually ties into the comments we get all the time. Like you guys say that this is not that uncommon, but where do you find men or women like you guys? We're out there. You, so, we're just not out there like everybody else is putting themselves out there because dating apps are fucking trash. With me being the way that I am now, the advice that I would give to me five or six years ago, take up space and approach people. <clears throat> Brash is not the word I'm looking for. Blunt is not the word I'm looking for. Bold. Bold, maybe. I just was running with the bees. But italic. Like. Be a woman. I don't think you and I would have ever became a thing if I wasn't. Abrasive is not the word. <laughs> what is it? Abrasive is definitely not the right no, word. No, it's... You were a light and a darkness to me. Right, but like I was also very, I'm coming for you. I think that your personality was there when I needed it most and it allowed mm -hmm. me to see you see you. Right. But like when things evolved and we recognized that this was going beyond friendship... I wasn't iffy about it. You knew what you wanted. Right. I was very. Fucking hate that I'm organic matter. <sighs> are you just running through the Rolodex? I of am. Words? Are, like, you, are, you, are you picturing your little pocket dictionary with all your highlighter in it? Trying I to find am. The word? And I, I have it in my face. And I'm like, where the fuck <laughs> is it? Brazen, somebody said. No, not brazen. It's. I didn't make you chase me, but I was also still very flirty and sexy. And when I wanted you, I got it. Like, right. Well, it speaks to confidence. You knew what you wanted and you were not willing to settle. Right. The, so, and there's nothing wrong with that. I, I think that if everybody had that mentality, relationships would look a whole lot different. I don't think Tinder would be a thing. Wouldn't have to be. We, we have become so introverted and scared of being in public that we've had to create Tinder and all of these other dating apps. I would give advice to old me to, if you find a dude attractive, talk to him, talk to him. If you're nervous, run with it, make it funny. You're good at that. Do you think that you would have listened to you? And I asked that because Kevin, I talked to Kevin last night for over right. an hour on the phone and he said he watched my talking to 18 year old me and mm -hmm. he's like, I don't think that I would have listened to myself. I would have. Yeah. 
Why? Hope. Okay, that's fair. The hopium is real. It is. Yeah, that's a lot. The, um, <clears throat> okay, so let me ask you this, because this is all just bullshit conversation at this point anyways, mm. but do you think that with the, the current dating scene and the rule of sixes and the way that it's being pushed down people's throat that women only need to bring their body to the table? Because every time a woman's asked, do what I do you bring to the okay? table? They always go, well, me. Do I agree with that? Well, would you have fallen for that? Do you think that in today's climate, if you would not have met me and you were still in that, the, the younger mindset, we'll call it 18 to 26, that's living in today's current climate, do you mm -hmm. think that you would have mm -hmm. fell for that, that brainwashing that we're seeing across social media and YouTube? I mean, it's definitely a possibility. I already felt like a sexual object, so... Do you think that you would have leaned into it? Because I think a lot of women Maybe. are. Hmm. If all I ever feel like is a sexual object, why not be the villain? Very toxic mindset. Very yeah, shitty I was just, mindset. Just thinking that's that's a flawed logic. It is. <clears throat> that's a lot. It's a lot. There's there's so much there to process. And I'm sure that there was a whole bunch of shit happening in the chat that I missed. But I do know that there are people in our Discord and part of our Patreon community that met on dating apps and they're right. thriving. But how did that happen? Like, because I'm OK, so let's let's break the break, break this down to basic dating. Everything starts with appearance. Yes. Right. Because otherwise there's no interest to talk to somebody. Right. You could have another <clears throat> version of me that looks entirely different that you're not physically attracted to in the, it would never happen because the initial physical attraction there wasn't enough for you to want to engage me in conversation. Right. I go out of my way to avoid people who look like they don't shower. Right. So knowing that the physical attraction is necessary, yeah. we can't remove pictures from dating apps, but the physical attraction is there only to get you to have conversations. Mm -hmm. So do we get rid of the descriptions and not have a, a, and make it purely based on looks? This is also why me and this other person that are, are talking about these, mm -hmm. these dating sites, the screenshots that I was being sent has such a hard time with all of this because there is a lot of failure happening in people's lives there and is. there's not enough guidance <clears throat> or mentorship and, and there's needs to be some sort of calling up, changing of the guard. Yes. To, to, to correct the problem. And, and that's kind of why I wanted to have the conversation about the single mom thing. Um, but now we've moved so far, far past that we're over an hour into this. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to have that conversation now, but sorry. It's okay. I, I the raw conversations, raw conversation is good for the podcast. I just yeah. didn't <laughs> see it going down that route. <clears throat> I really do want to see men profile men's profiles. I'm willing to bet that most of them are going to be one of two things. It's going to be somebody that is solely based on their appearance. It's all they have to offer. The, the male version of a thirst trap, they're going to be there flexing their muscles, thinking that that's the going v to... The V-taper. Right, right. Or they're going to be talking solely about their money because those are the only two things that mm -hmm. they feel they bring into a relationship. And like, that's not enough. Your physical appearance will only last for so long. Time beats all of us. Bro, who's going to hold me when I'm crying? <clears throat> right. Who's going to soothe me when I'm acting crazy? So that yeah. speaks on, on a lot more than the um, surface level shit. And how are we going to get to know that if we can't have a honest discussion of the description of who we are as people? Yeah, <clears throat> I, I wouldn't do dating apps just purely because of the over influx of bullshit. It's depressing. So when you're a kid and you're in school or you're in college, mm -hmm. You, you meet people where you're going to school at. When you become into the workforce, you meet people in the workforce. Mm -hmm. And if you're an adult doing adult things, a lot of those adults are spoken for already. So that, that dating pool gets a whole lot smaller. <clears throat> and being that people don't frequent outings the way they used to, social circles are all digital now. How does that work? Do you, do you really think that you would get back in the dating game at all? Or if, do you, if, if this if, were an alternate universe and we and, had not got together and we had not gotten <clears throat> together and this was the current state of affairs, I would live my life. <clears throat> I would work on me and growing my empire 
And if somebody caught my attention, I would approach them. Everything that I said and seeing where that went, <clears throat> we would have conversation. Would you not, so you wouldn't actively look, you would just <laughs> let life happen. Right. I actually think that that's the best way to go about it. And if somebody piques my interest. Yeah. I, I think that people find people when they're not actively looking. Yeah. And they always come in weird places, right? Yeah. Like it's, yeah. But there, that also speaks on a courage because you have to be willing to have the conversation with the stranger. Um, it, it was like the, mm -hmm. the, the love story we got where the, the guy fucking called to work and was like, Hey, is she working? And like, you know what I mean? Like it, that's mm -hmm. obviously there was social media wasn't a thing then. Right. So I don't know. Yeah. You want to do an email or two and then wrap it up? Yeah, we can. You got to do your garden episode in <clears throat> two and a half hours. So this t uh, email is titled, should I have more patience? Yes. There is an update included. Themes about pressuring marriage, feeling that relationship security needs are not being met. Hi, Chris and Peach. I have been a fan of your guys' for about a year now. You guys have given so much advice, wisdom, and insight into relationships and overall being a better person. <laughs> and that has helped me immensely when applying it to my own life. However, I am struggling to find guidance in my current situation and Hoped perhaps I'd find it from you guys, or at least something that will give me something to think on. I, 21 female, have been dating my boyfriend, 25, for a year now. We've known each other for a year and a half. An ongoing issue we had is our stance on marriage, or rather how fast to go about doing things. A factor into this is that he is military and recently got orders to move across the country, so please keep that in mind. So I'm going to be honest. I don't think he's in the military should ever be a reason to marry somebody. I agree. <clears throat> it's definitely not a reason to marry somebody. I know two people in my personal life, both in the military, both rushed the marriages and are now both divorced. Right. And messy. You get, you get benefits for being married while in right. the military. I understand that aspect of it. But it needs to be a business transaction, not not an actual marriage. Yeah. If you're going to play that game, I, I I don't know. So there's a whole lot here already that's mm -hmm. got my like. This is not it. Yeah. She's how old did she say she was? Twenty one or twenty two? Twenty one. Okay, and he's twenty five, and in the military right. and getting ready to be sent stationed. out overseas. Yeah. Right. So he's going to be gone, and they're a year into their relationship. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't either. I wouldn't factor that in. Period. I I gotta be honest. I don't think if, if I was him. Unless I was madly in love, I wouldn't even be trying to pursue the relationship knowing that I'm going to get deployed. Mm -hmm. You're going to be gone for what, six months, a year maybe? And then you know you don't know where you're going to get stationed. You may not get to go back to your home area. You may get stationed somewhere else. Yeah. And then station, station, stationed. Mm -hmm. Like, are you really trying to be a phone relationship? Like, get a pen pal. Like, I, I, how is that going to actually give you any type of real connection to somebody? I don't know. All right, continuing on. I personally believe that a year of dating has been enough time for us to move forward with getting married. We have been living together since the beginning of August of 2023, as well have found that we work well together even after the honeymoon phase. I love him dearly and see... Ooh, even after the honeymoon phase? Oh, yeah, no, the honeymoon phase is a two-year period. Yeah, well, the technically, that's what has been statistically written. Right. That first two years is the honeymoon <laughs> phase because mm -hmm. that's how long it takes for the the brain to regulate and the red flags to start being seen for what they are. Mm -hmm. So if you're a year into the relationship, the honeymoon phase is gone. That tells me everything I need to know. Well, she said it's not. Oh, wait, hang on. We worked well together even after the honeymoon phase. Oh, you're right. Yeah. So they're almost a year in and the honeymoon phase is gone? Yeah. And he's only 25 years old. Right. I don't know about that. I don't know. Continuing on. Yep. I love him dearly and see my whole life with him. He says he sees the same, but doesn't agree on the marriage aspect. He doesn't want to get engaged, let alone married, before having to relocate to his new base, but still wants me to come with him. 
He assures me that he'll take care of me and support me, but fails to see the need I have for security and stability. What security and stability does he get? Right. Right. The security and stability needs to be established before the marriage. That's why you marry somebody. Yep. The marriage is not the security and stability. The person is. Yep. The security comes from knowing that in the event that she leaves him, she'll get military benefits or alimony. Yeah. Um, There's no, that's, that's bullshit. I, 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 I agree can, with him. I can see why he's not getting married. Yeah. You, you remember Matt Vincent? Yes. Um, he made a video. It came up on my feed this morning at like seven o'clock this morning. Who said that he is he's married, mm -hmm. but he's not legally married, right? And he's talking to a group of men, and he's like, the reason for that is because I want her to be able to leave as clean and as as easily as possible. And I have a set standard of expectations set on me by her. She she we had our vows when I was very active, and mm -hmm. I'm a go getter, and I'm hustling, and I'm doing the life thing. And if I ever fail to meet those or I have set false expectations, I want her to be able to just go if that's what she wants to do. And that works as a twofold thing. There's a security in that knowing that she can bounce whenever the fuck she wants to, mm -hmm. but it also keeps him accountable and making right. sure that he maintains that motherfucker while they're doing what they're doing. I love that. I do too. I, I, I have so it. much respect for that dude. Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoyed interviewing him. Yeah. He, he's smart. Yeah. Like, fucking smart, smart. Um, he also said that he has a 10 year or a five year, I think it might've been 10 year, um, focus. You remember earlier you said that you had like a one year relationship. Mm -hmm. He said that he had a 10 year focus. Like he would go really hard on something for 10 years and that's about the time he would get bored and then move on to something else. And you see it with his Scotland games cause he's a world champion Scotland's games. And then mm -hmm. his businesses and the things that he's doing, he gets about 10 years and then he moves on, moves on to something else because it no longer interests him, which is fair because seasons change. Right. Um, I don't know. That's just a lot. That's a lot. <clears throat> All right. Continuing on. Yep. I don't want to depend on him. I want to be with him. But all discussions of marriage come back to him saying, I need to have patience with him. His time frame is us getting married within two years is what he finally told me after many arguments. You not respecting his wishes to wait on marriage is rubbing me the wrong way. So, this is me speaking from my perspective, through my bias, and I'm about to spew some hypothetical shit. Okay. Her pushing for marriage seems irrational to me. Especially if he said marriage is on the table, I would just like some patience. I also view it as self-destructive because she's craving love so much and needing validation. My first marriage was 100% the marriage is the finish line. I achieved that and I've achieved everything. I didn't have the long-term sight to understand that the marriage was the beginning. And when I was in that mindset, I was damaged. I was broken. I felt like I didn't matter. And I craved that security of this person will never leave me because he just agreed to marry me. It's entrapment in a sense. It is. It also speaks on what we believe marriage is. Right. And not what it should be. Right. So with me having my own experience on, on being that person who we are racing to the marriage line, I pushed for it. And I got a shut her up ring. I bought my own ring. That's how much I was pushing for it. And... Very clearly that marriage did not work out because I wanted to satiate a void in me with anybody willing to take that place and I could tolerate them a little bit. Would you, do you think that, um, do you think that that marriage is, is now a tool to allow people to be shitty towards each other? Because you just said that marriage was, the end goal. You got it. And you know, that person's going to be there and they're not going to leave you. And they're going to tolerate all my shit. Yeah. So, I mean, with that mindset, it, you're basically giving yourself permission to be a horrible human being to your spouse. 
Yeah. In the defense of, well, you're triggering me. I'm reacting this way because you're triggering right, me. You this is this. your fault. Yeah. yeah. That's definitely not the move. Right. It wasn't. Fucked up my life a lot. I fucked up my own life a lot. So in reading this email, like I said, I definitely have a bias <clears throat> on this. And my advice would be be patient. I agree with your boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. Continuing on. Mm -hmm. Before that, he told me he wanted to give me the chance to go back home if I decided it was all too much after we moved, which is also a valid point. I wouldn't want to get married to somebody. We are two years into the marriage, we've moved three times and you're like, I can't do this anymore. I want to have a family and kids and establish roots. It's not going to be a thing for a traveling military man. Right. All right. So I, I view that as valid to try that test the waters and see how she feels about the military life before committing to it. Continuing on, for backstory, I have lived in the same state and area for my entire life, and I've never moved elsewhere, so this will be a big change for me. See, that makes a lot of sense. You're leaving your family, you're leaving your friends, you're leaving everything you've known your entire life, and moving away with someone you've known for a year and a half. Right, and that's what she said. She wanted the security. It had nothing to do with the want of love and foundation and right. life. She literally just wanted security. He's the security. <clears throat> The marriage is just an agreement that I'm never going to leave this. I'm choosing you over everything that can be thrown at us. In the moment. In, In the moment, right. yeah. I don't like what marriage has become. Me either. And I and, and that's a very that's a whole other discussion. Um, and I, I'm really not going to get into that. We'll do that a whole a whole episode another time. But mm -hmm. as it's been watered down. And it's become more and more acceptable to have these these conversations for people to just bounce and not work through things. <clears throat> it it muddies the water to the point where there's no no security in marriage other than the money that comes after it. And if that's going to be what marriage is, security for the woman, men are not going to get married because there's no value in it for us. Mm -hmm. What is it? Why buy the cow when you get the milk for free? And women have made it free. Yep. Not all women, but enough of our sisters had decided to give it away for free that we're all rotten apples now. All right, continue reading. Yep. I recently brought this up again, but this time it was due to a current pregnancy scare we are having. I don't have answers as if I am or not. I asked him what the plan is if I am. He asked if I meant in regards to marriage after a long silence, said something along the lines of, we'll figure something out if we get to that point. I view that as a logical answer. We're not going to start what-ifing right now. And she, she very clearly is getting her hopes up every time she asks, waiting for him to change his mind. I will tell the kids all the time, stop asking me because you rephrasing your question is not going to change my answer. Yeah, it should annoy the fuck out of me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> The answer was no the first time. The answer is going to be no the fourth time. So I, I am viewing this as the hurt inner child in her reaching out for validation of tell me you want me, tell me you want me, tell me you want this versus the marriage for commitment of the rest of the life and well, union. This now speaks on the, 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 the pregnancy scare speaks on what we were talking about earlier with the single mom thing though. Right. Like I can see the fear in that. Right. Especially if you're, you know, um, anti-abortion. Mm -hmm. Because now, now what are you going to do? Well, I also want to know, like, are you guys taking precautions? <coughs> right. Are you on birth control? Are you using condoms or? Just winging it and hoping for Has she not gotten pregnant in the last four years? Yeah. Skeet shooting. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. That, um, that matters. It does. But if this is one of those things where she is set on needing marriage and he's mm -hmm. not, this might are, not be it. Why are you trying to get pregnant 
Or why are you not taking extra precautions to not get pregnant? Right. I really don't like the idea that they are, that she's pushing so hard for this and they're only, a, they're not even a year in. She said almost a year. And um, they're already out of the honeymoon phase. They're arguing over shit left and right. Like She did say about a year now. Yeah. Damn. So was it seven months, eight months? It's about a year. Could be 10, could be 11, could be. Yeah. Could be, could be seven. That's more than half. So I'm going to say this like I am speaking to 18 year old me. Okay. Right. So I am not speaking to the emailer. I'm speaking to 18 year old me in a room adjacent where she can hear it. You're crazy showing. We have to reel it back in. I have to remind myself that my anxieties are not reality. Me telling myself that I am worthless and that I am not good enough and he deserves better than me and he's going to find another woman or there's somebody more beautiful than me. All of those things, if I say it to myself enough, I'm going to start saying it out loud. And I 100% believe in manifestation. Yeah, your thoughts become things. Right. So eventually, me spewing all of that shit onto you. Damn, you're right. That girl does look good in those leggings over there. With all of that back there, why not? Right? I pushed people in my life away. I pushed possible suitors away because of my craziness. I was too much. I was overly attached. I was overly anxious. They were my source of happiness. And if you did not provide happiness, we had a problem. And it was your fault. Now that I've gotten older and I've evolved, I provide my own happiness. The fact that you make me happy is just a really dope bonus of life. But you are not perform jester. Now do something else because that's not making me happy anymore. Well, I don't want to do that. That makes me uncomfortable. That doesn't matter to me. You're not making me happy right now. This is a problem. That's the mindset that I'm hearing from this with my cognitive bias and my own life experience saying those same kinds of things in the argument for marriage. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Was any of that super shitty? Um, I, it's honest. So I don't give a fuck if it's shitty or not. Because I'm saying it with love. Okay. People need to heal. They do. <clears throat> Continuing on? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So he said, we'll figure something out if we get to that point. This was hard to hear as it feels to me as if he still wouldn't want to marry me, even with a child involved. That's not why you get married. That is not why you get married. This is, um, every, this is all the wrong reasons. Right. So it, literally everything that she's mentioned mm -hmm. for marriage is the wrong reason. It sounds childlike to me. Disney princess type shit? Yes. Like, I know the children will start giving answers if they think the answer they give me is not going to be good enough or right. get them in trouble. Hey, people, please. No, tell me the truth. You're not pushing for a marriage because you want security. You're worried that you're gonna, he's going to leave you. Right. Doesn't want to move across the country and be away from her support system. Right. And not have some sort of security that he's not going anywhere, which means his word is not enough for her. And why is that? Do you think that could be her own self-sabotaging or is he not a man of his word? Right. Because those are two separate things. You can work on your self-sabotaging. If he's not the man for you, he's not the man for you. You know, I believe that there are only two things that a man gives a woman. What's that? On their wedding day. It's his word and his last name. Mm -hmm. That's it. And if you get married and you're, if you're a man and you give those two things and your name doesn't mean shit and your word doesn't mean shit, you're not bringing anything to the relationship mm -hmm. because you can't be trusted and you don't have a legacy to leave behind. So like if she doesn't trust his word, I just need more time. Like right. we're going to go do this thing. I'm going to get out of the military to where I'm stationed mm -hmm. and we're good. And wherever we end up, we can start, you know, we can right. look into marriage and, and schools and all of that shit for kids and, mm -hmm. and, and the white picket fence. But I want to start that part of our life after my deployment. Right. 
What's the problem there? I don't see one. <clears throat> I just want to take a second and go, Ella, you fucking get it. You, you go journal that accountability. I am here for it. She's one of my women in the women's group. What is this? What is the journal of accountability? This sounds like a oh. magic item in Dungeons and Dragons, and I am invested. Uh, well, I've challenged a woman to start journals and keep tracks of things, and I'm not sure if that's her own journal of her own making. But I'm stealing that. Yeah, I I'm mean, gonna make she, a magic she made that item. up. I never said journal of accountability. That was her own creation. Uh, okay, I yeah. like that. Jenny said at that society. I think women are very much about the he's just gonna up and leave you one day narrative. But we know that statistically that's not the case. Right. But that's insecurity that I believe that is instilled in childhood. Right. But it, so, but we know that that's not okay. the case. I have a thought and I don't want to lose it. Go. So I would have a conversation with him of why do you, why do you want to hold it off? And I, she needs to be prepared for the answers of that. I feel like we're not ready for marriage yet. And it could be to, due to emotional immaturity. This email comes across emotionally immature. I understand the emailer's 21. She's young. There's still a lot of growth there. I am not judging. I am not shitting. I am not saying you're wrong. I'm trying to offer a new perspective that I wish 21-year-old me had. Which is fair. I'm mothering you right now. <laughs> Take a step back. This man is with you for a reason. Good things take time. I told our daughter last night, she was helping me make biscuits and gravy. And she's just running around the kitchen and grabbing shit and going and doing this and doing that. And I'm like, sweetheart, you need to slow down. Moving fast and not thinking is how you get hurt. We've had that conversation so many times over the last two weeks. <laughs> and she did. She got <laughs> hurt. She was helping me put the biscuits into the oven and because she was rushing, her hand hit the rack. And I was like, baby, this is why I told you, you got to slow down. And she was like, well, I just want to be like you. And I was like, sweetheart, me telling you these things is how you're going to become like me. You need to listen to what I'm saying versus watching what I'm doing and try to copy it. The instructions are so much more important than the picture, right? To get to a good, healthy marriage... I would highly recommend working on this desperate grasp of I am worthy of somebody wanting me. I can understand there is a fear in moving away from everything that you've known. Like I said, with a man that you've known for a year and a half. If it doesn't work out, the really dope thing is you can buy a ticket back home. Did she say that, they, that she's known him for a year and a half? They've known each other for a year okay. and a half and they've been together for about a year. Your world's not going to end if you guys don't work out. Right. And you guys being married is not going to guarantee you guys not no. working out. It's going to make that separation a whole lot harder if it doesn't work so out. So much harder. <clears throat> but that speaks to his word. Right. You said... You said a lot just now. And it triggered a thought, and I can't remember exactly where the thought came in, but it's still lingering, so I'm going to just run with it. Okay, go with it. The value that comes into being a wife, mm -hmm. the value in yourself that... You need to have to to secure a man that wants to marry you and be that mm -hmm. needs to be there before you try to secure a man to love you. Right. If you if you don't have self worth and you don't have the value in yourself and know what you bring to the table and you have that self doubt of I'm not good enough and he's going to leave, what are you really bringing to the table that makes you an asset to the man to make make him want to keep you there? Mm -hmm. That's what you really need to be asking. Not, well, he could just leave me. You're right, he could. Yes. You could leave him. And it's a choice, just like he's choosing to be with you. Right. You need to maintain a level of... I need to be worth being kept. Right. And if you can't do that, yeah. that marriage certificate's not going to do a fucking thing. Mm -hmm. What I was going to say earlier is that we know statistically... 75 to 80 percent of divorces are initiated by women and i understand that the the narrative is that he's just going to up and leave you we know statistically that that's not the case right not anymore maybe in the dating world mm -hmm. but in marriage it's cheaper it's to keep her right i don't want to lose half my shit definitely don't want to lose my fucking kids mm -hmm. i it doesn't matter if i'm fucking miserable and being beat down every single day my family's still here 
right? Which is why men don't initiate at the same level women do. Mm -hmm. If we all know that to be true, because statistics have shown, why is that fear still there for women? Because out of sight, out of mind, I am dealing with my panic trauma response right now. That's my response from old me. I, I need this fire put out <coughs> inside of me before I look at anything else. And I was asking people to pour water on me who weren't even holding buckets. That makes you that seaweed floating in the ocean as you put 100%, it. A hundred percent. Yeah. No accountability on your, your behalf. Yes. Everything was everybody else's fault. Yeah. Hmm. And then I would blame them for not having the answers to the questions that I was asking. Answers that you yourself didn't have. Right. Yep. Yeah. So I, I need reassurance now. Okay. We, we, this has been a fucking episode. Yeah. Right there. We have gone all over the place with this. This feels like the old podcast. <clears throat> Does it? Yeah. I need to know that you guys still find value in what we're doing. Like actual value, not here because you enjoy Peaches and I as content creators, but like what we're doing still fucking matters because this has been all over the place today. It has. We, we are, we are in all of this. Continuing on. Should I have more patience? The last thing I want to do is make him feel pressured into marriage since that never ends well. But I'm to the point of feeling like anything I need is being disregarded. More so because of how he replied if a child was involved. Okay, so outside perspective and me thinking in past me logic, is it possible you may have taken it personally because you were seeking a yes because you've been seeking a yes this whole time? You didn't get what you wanted. Right. You didn't get what you wanted. What is Mary? What is marriage going to truly do for her? Satiate. I, I, right. right. I, I know what I get out of us. Right. And I would have gotten that out of us whether we got married or not. Our commitment to each other is a commitment to each mm -hmm. other. And and I don't need a, a, a I don't need our. I'm glad our God is involved now, and we're Me redoing too. things with our God. But right, yeah. A, a paper or an agreement is just that. Right. There is nothing other than a tax break and insurance mm -hmm. from that standpoint that would come from being married. Yeah. For me, for you, in the event that, you know, there was no prenuptial agreement, you might be able to take half my shit. That's a real concern. So where does the value in marriage actually land? For me, it lands on faith because I believe that we would have the exact same relationship that we have, even mm -hmm. if we didn't exchange vows. Because we've treated each other this way since the beginning. Right. So if you have a man who is treating you as if he is a husband and you are a woman who is living as a wife, what more is that going to do? Because <clears throat> she said a need. Right. So where yeah. is the need is being the need? fulfilled? Yeah. The need for me, I, I wanted that ceremony with you. I wanted to, t oh God, I'm going to start fucking crying. It's okay. You, you, you had like 30 minutes earlier, so. I wanted to <coughs> carve out time just for us to really lay on the line how much I love you and the lengths I'm willing to go f for you and that this is it for me. Like there, there's really nothing that you can do for me to walk away from what we have. And that's what the marriage that's what, I, be. that's what I got out of marrying you. Okay. Right? Because the relationship has been maintained, but it's also prospered. It's gotten better. So I agree with you. Like, what, it, what is that need that she's getting? Because just saying the security, well, he's the security. I'm going to devil's advocate you. Okay. That's one day. Right. A couple hours. It's not even a full day. Marriage ceremony is a couple hours. Right, yeah. You showing me that once in our lifetime is not going to sustain a marriage. No, I, I want that memory of us doing that. Like I, I, I want the I experience. Totally, I totally yeah. understand that. I'm not negating it. I'm not downplaying that. Right. My point is that's an hour, two hours, call it five hours of our life mm -hmm. together. 
in one day that shows me that. If you don't show me that the other 364 days a year, mm-hmm. this marriage would not sustain. Right. Because we are not dedicated to it. This is no different than a holiday. If I buy you a gift because it's Tuesday, it's very different than buying a gift because it's my birthday. Valentine's Day said I'm supposed to buy you a card, chocolates, and roses. Mm-hmm. It's a very different scenario because it's authentic when it's Tuesday and you get a card and chocolates yeah. and new garden stuff or whatever it is that makes you happy. Mm-hmm. The ceremony m- makes sense to me, right? I'm not, so I, I totally get that. All right. So continuing on, the last thing I want to do is make him feel pressured into a marriage since that never ends well, but I'm getting to a point of feeling like everything I need is being disregarded more so because of how he apl- replied if a child was involved. I'm feeling like I can't trust his commitment. I'm uprooting my entire life and everything I know to be with him, but I feel as if there's no security from him in what I'm doing. Am I thinking too far into this or overthinking it? Well, I don't know what kind of man he is. Is he sliding into other women's DMs? Because, no, I don't think you're overthinking it. I would not have any security in a relationship like that. But I also wouldn't stay in a relationship like that. I wouldn't either. If he's a good man and he has been a man of his word and he just is asking for some patience on marriage, this man's going through a lot right now. He's getting ready to go overseas. I don't know where he's going, but there's a lot of wars going on right now overseas. I would be fucking terrified to leave my home country. So many mixed emotions. Am I doing the right thing? Am I doing this because I want to? Or am I doing this because I feel like an, I have an obligation to my country? Like, Well, that used to be the thing. You, right. you ask old veterans, they were obligated to their country. Right. New veterans don't feel that way. Right. New veterans feel like they're fighting wars for politicians that don't represent them. Right. Yeah. Continuing on. Yeah. I appreciate you guys, but I'll leave this anom- uh, oh my God. anonymous to be on the safe side. Keep being amazing. And then there's the update. Okay. Oh, fuck. I forgot there was an update. So it says, hi, Chris and Beach. I am here to fill you guys in with an update since my first email. There's a lot, so I hope you both don't mind the lengthiness ahead. After my first initial attempt at asking my boyfriend about marriage and his response being, we'll figure it out. I shortly after that, within the same day, asked him why he had such an aversion to marriage. When I asked this, we were laying in bed cuddling at the time. My head was on his chest, so I couldn't see his reaction. However, I could feel him tense as soon as I said it. I could hear how upset he was, as well as him telling me I don't have an aversion to marriage. After my first initial attempt, I thought you guys had had several arguments about this. That's what she said in the last email. Right. So two things that stood out to me in that also, besides that, because I was going to say something about that, was that she visibly physically felt him tense yeah she told him how he felt right okay yep his body had a physical reaction to her saying something like that yeah that's a trauma response to me it absolutely is and it's it is a visceral Mm -hmm. trauma response if that is a right yeah Continuing on, my boyfriend does not get visibly upset hardly ever. I don't say that to try and make your opinion of him better, but purely speaking facts. He is a very easygoing and even-tempered individual. The only time I've ever had him visibly get upset with me, or in general, is whenever the topic of marriage came up. I would also like to note that he is also on the autism spectrum. This isn't something I am familiar... This is something... This isn't something I'm not familiar with, as I grew up with not only a sister who was autistic, but a younger brother who has his own set of disabilities. That was written really poorly. That was written very poorly. This is something I'm familiar with because... No, she said... Right, I know. That's how it should have been worded. This isn't something I'm not. You just used... What is it? What do they call it? Double negatives? Yeah, that was a double negative. Yeah. I also thank you. Um, Angel Food said yes. Blame the blame the tism. With our our the way things are in the world right now, we're all fucked up. 
We are all fucked up, yeah. The Especially li- with the food that we've been eating for the last 60, 70 years. Right. We're the, all fucked up. The likelihood of you finding somebody who is not fucked up to a degree is rare. Right. I think that's important to recognize because people are so quick to throw a label on something and it's like flex seal. Right. Doesn't work that way. Mm-hmm. Okay. So continuing on, it's never been an issue for me as I myself am dyslexic and I just don't see it as an issue. He's just him and I love every bit of who he is. It doesn't mean we haven't had some difficulties trying to understand each other. Over time, over the time of us being together, we've discovered and learned different ways to try and work on understanding each other and also working together on various things to help each other feel appreciated and loved. You, she just said that because he is on the spectrum, they have a hard time navigating life or however she worded that. The issues that you're having has nothing to do with the fact that he's on the spectrum. It's that you two can't communicate and you have trauma and needs that need to be met and he's not meeting them. Right. It has nothing to do with him being on the spectrum. Right. I mean, I'm sure it's a, a contributing factor, right? You don't just make a cake with flour. So a a relationship is a multi-layered, very in-depth breathing thing and it evolves and it grows and it needs nourishment. Right. She just took the blame of everything that is going on and stuck it on something that's not the problem at all. Right. His autism. Okay. So continuing on after he said that he didn't want to discuss it more. I get that you, you've already come at, came at me sideways and now I'm, I'm triggered. Like I need a minute. Well, now he knows there's going to be conflict too, because every right. single time this has been brought up, there's been conflict. Right. And, and her statement <clears throat> of saying, what is your aversion to marriage? That's a you statement. I'm having a lot of anxiety when we talk about marriage and it's because I need to feel like I'm worthy of X, Y, and Z, or I need to feel like you're never going to leave me. That's a whole, that's a totally different conversation starter versus why do you have such a strong aversion to marriage? Why are you the problem here? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's exactly what that is too. Okay. So continuing on, I attempted to explain how it came across as if he did. And if he didn't, it made it feel like he just had an aversion to marrying me. So she did take it personally. Do you remember that conversation that we had that said, um, it was a meme and it was said, um, damn, you're so intimidating. And the friend said, is it that she's intimidating or Or that you are intimidated because those are two very different things? Mm -hmm. Right. That's what that is to me. Yeah. Continuing on, that he didn't really want to marry me, and that was the whole reason. Yeah, it it really sounds like she's fishing for validation. Right, and now she's trying to manipulate him into agreeing. And it's self-sabotaging. This is the kind of shit that I would do. I feel like this is the way it is, so I need you to just tell me yes to marriage. Well, that's not how that works, because this is how I feel right now. And I'm not going to change how I feel right now just to satiate your anxiety. Somebody should have told me that. How selfish of me. Let's just do everything that you want to do. (laughs) You know, I was thinking about Jim Carrey this morning. Yeah. On my drive, because the kids love listening to Mr. Grinch, but the one from the Jim Carrey movie. And I was singing it and I'm having fun. And when Jim Carrey sings Mr. Grinch, it's different voices and funny things like, and I'm singing it, and then our, our kids are singing it in the back seat, and our daughter is so dramatic. And there's that part in the song um, where like he's in a cave and he tests the echo, and it's just a really long note. But and I'm holding the note, but our daughter's in the back seat and she's going, ah. <laughs> and I'm like, this man has provided so much happiness for people. I'm surprised that he's not Robin Williams himself. Me too, especially when his girlfriend died yep. and everybody blamed him. 
He is one of those human beings that I am very grateful to be alive at the same time with. Yeah. Yeah. Robin Williams was one of those people too. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 Robin Williams is the only celebrity death that has ever affected me. Jim Carrey's same Robin Williams and Jim Carrey's death is really going to fuck me up. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Truman show. I, now that I'm older watching that movie, it has a whole different meaning to me. Yeah. And just, he gets so involved into everything that he does. We I'm should, just, we should watch that and break it down the way that we break down shit. I would fucking love to do that with you. Oh my goodness. Okay. Take it down to seven. Cause you're at, you're at 12 right now. Like that was barely contained excitement. <laughs> my bones are jittery right now. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> breathe if you were standing there'd be thigh slapping <laughs> he's not wrong <laughs> that's exactly what i thought as i fell oh my gosh i love that you know me so well that when I got quiet and showed my excitement, you were like, oh, my God, it's a fucking nuke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's funny. <laughs> Thanks for paying attention to me, babe. Of course. All right. So continuing on. So she just said, it feels like you have an aversion to marrying me and that you didn't really want to marry me. And that was the whole reason. That's okay. I'm sorry. I was going to continue reading, but now I'm like, so that really negates everything else going on in his life. It's not that I'm, I'm stressed out about getting into the military and going overseas. It's not that I'm stressed out about leaving my family. It's not that I just can't handle this right now. It's not that I can't give you the undivided attention that I want to fucking give you on our wedding day. It's you at the center of this universe. That's not aggressive. I'm passionate right now. I'm speaking with emotion. I just heard myself using the F word and I was like, no. All right, now continuing on. So she said that this upset him and he told me, you, would you just be patient with me? This is a common phrase that's been thrown out almost, that's been thrown out most recently anytime this conversation came up. So he's telling you what he needs. And you're ignoring it. And you're not listening. Right. Crazy because, how that works. Because what she needs is more important. Now the nagging is going to start. Right. Right. It's already started. Because now there's an automated answer of, I've told you this already, patience. Yeah. At that point, I dropped the conversation and didn't bring it back up for about a week. During that week, we found out that I was not, in fact, pregnant. My period was just late. Hang on. So the longest time you guys have gone without having an argument over this is a week. We don't know that. She said she just said I dropped it for a week for a week. Right. So is this like you guys are waking up and the conversation is just con con continuing every single day? Is this being brought up every other day? I was that person every three business days. There was a crisis. It's exhausting. It is exhausting. And that was rooted in my anxious attachment. And that was my self-sabotaging behavior. Okay, continuing on. What spurred me to bring it back up was some friends of mine. They Crazy. Mean, Crazy how that works. You right. don't have to put me back. <laughs> they mean very well. They're older in their 40s and care very much for me. They've been there for me through very rough times. I come from a, manip a manipulative, narcissistic, and toxic family. With your behavior, I believe it. Namely my mother. I agree. We see it. And they really watch out for me. Upon hearing about my boyfriend getting orders to move, their first concern was us getting married. It's a different generation. Yep. Because now their opinions are going to supersede every, everything that's going on in the relationship. That's why you don't bring other people into your relationship. Right. Non-biased people, like a therapist or a preacher, would be the move. If you're religious. 
Yep. I'm surprised that he's put up with it for this long. Maybe his deployments, his exit strategy. I don't know. Good on him for standing his ground, though. <coughs> Nobody should be pressured into marriage. I agree. Man or woman. I concur, doctor. I just lived a lifetime where I got a doctorate degree just because I enjoyed you calling me doctor. Did you ever watch that movie, um, Catch Me If You Can, with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio no. uh, and Tom Hanks, where he's a, he's a con artist? And he passed the bar exam to become a lawyer, but because he was a con artist, they wanted to know how he faked the bar exam. But in that, he faked a doctorate. He made a doctorate for himself and got a job at a hospital and like was doctoring people. And he watched... Grey's Anatomy? Some, <laughs> yeah, some sort of black and white TV show about doctors. And one of the things that happened in the show, the doctor was like, do you concur, nurse? And the, the, the nurse was like, yes, doctor, I concur. And then the doctor did what he did. And then he did that to the nurse on the uh, like while somebody had like a, a broken leg or something. Do you concur, nurse, that the doctor's broken? She said, "I concur, doctor." Like, and he's okay. Leg's broken. Like, it's just what an ego stroke. It's so stupid that that I anytime I say I concur or I agree, That's I that, always yeah. go to that scene in my head. We'll have to add that to the list. Okay. So continuing on, they are worried about me uprooting my entire life for someone who doesn't seem to want to commit in that way. He didn't say he doesn't want to marry you. He said, please be patient with me when it comes to marriage. Yeah. Are you telling people that this man said he doesn't want to marry you? That's exactly what she's doing. Because now you're fucking lying. She said it to him. She has told him numerous times now that that's what he feels. And she's doing it to us in the email. So, of course, she's telling other people. But he things. hasn't said that. Those were not his words. You said that he's asked you to be patient with him. He has said that we'll cross that bridge when we get there perspective not once has this man said i'm not marrying you and this is a negativity bias that is created when there's one-way conversations not involving the other person absolutely wild this is why we tell people the things that we tell people this is a real life example that you guys can see insane that we don't just say things to say things i'm absolutely flabbergasted right now because you're right she did say it to us to him it feels like you don't want to marry me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're right. Continuing on, and they brought this up to me as they have in the past. Basically, naming their various worries about the risks of me going with. Those risks include health. Like if I were to get hurt, you would go to a hospital. You're not living in the middle of a jungle in a shack house. Like, you're not going down into the worst parts of Mexico. You want to marry this man, so obviously there there is a certain level of safety and trust that he is going to take care of you. That's what it comes down to. It sounds like she needs somebody to take care of her. It sounds like she's not capable of doing it on her own. No, it sounds like she's pushing <laughs> for marriage to... I mean, I, I disagree with that perspective. Do you? Because it sounds like this is all coming from wanting to satiate an insecurity. Okay. Can you read what you what she said about those people? What about them? Uh, I'm going to paraphrase just to save some time. She okay. said that these people are in their 40s and they look out for me because of my childhood right. and trauma and the abuse and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And they are concerned for my safety in the event that I go somewhere. Who's going to take care of me? What's going to happen? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, they don't you trust You said them. that if you get hurt... You go to the hospital. Right. You don't need somebody to take care of you for that. Yeah. At 21 years old, you're a fucking adult now. Mm -hmm. If you need a cavity with extracted, you call a dentist. You don't call your yeah. husband. Okay. I agree with your perspective now. Thank so you for elaborating. She needs somebody to take care of her because she's not yeah. capable of doing it herself at 21 years old. She's still a child. Well, it sounds like the things that they are saying to her is... Solidifying the... Solidifying yeah. the, the childlike... Yeah. Oh, wow. Good catch. It's because I listen to you talk. I like the way your mouth moves. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do when we, when we play these back and I have to sit in the premieres. I just wait for you to talk so I can see the side mouth thing that you do. <laughs> I, I see it a lot more in your TikToks than I see it yeah. on the podcast. Yeah. It's funny. 
Continuing on. Yep. My moving would leave me with no health insurance as I'm still on my parents. And once I move, I will no longer be available. That will. And once I move, it will no longer be available to me as I'll be in a different state. So you want to get married so you have health insurance. That sounds like a great reason to get married. You can just buy health insurance. Crazy, right? Crazy. <clears throat> did I tell you that some knife makers reached out to us and they're making us his and her you knives did. to replace the knives in our bug out bag? Yes. Continuing on? Yeah. Okay. They're worried that he will decide he doesn't want to be with me and I'll be stranded somewhere and alone. They're also worried about what happens if something happens to him and we're not <clears throat> married. All of these things have been brought up in the past and I've brought them up to my boyfriends. Damn. So, so, so now you're not even worried about being married because you're in love. You're, you want to make sure that in the event that he's killed in action, you get, you some get something. Boy, that sounds like a fucking marriage right there, isn't it? And if these people really cared about you, they'd be like, go do your thing and be happy. And in we're the event here. that you get stuck, call me. Plane right. tickets, 50 fucking dollars, man. Have it added to your Apple wallet. Like. Yeah. Yeah, that because these know, are cr- I'm th- concerned about you. They're creating issues. They don't want her to leave. If he did want to get married to her, would that change the fact that she's leaving the state with somebody that's not family? Right. Well, it's not guaranteed to get her insurance either, unless right. it's military. And, and like, what happens if he gets a discharge and it's not no longer in the military, and you guys are struggling to make it, and he doesn't buy your insurance? Then what? What happens if he kicks the bucket and there's no 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 life insurance or plan for retirement and you're 30 now mm-hmm. and because you still haven't done shit in your life other than relied on other people to fucking take care of you, yeah. then what you going to do? These are all the wrong reasons to get married, in my opinion. <coughs> this sounds like a business transaction. It is. That's exactly what it sounds like to me. This is not why you get married. If you die, I need to make sure I'm taken care of. Yeah. What about me? Well, if we're not married, you can just up and leave me. He can just up and leave you if you're married. The, yep. That piece of paper is not going to block him from walking out that door. These all sound like superficial excuses to pressure somebody into marriage. Mm-hmm. Okay. So all of these have been brought up to my boyfriend. His response has always been, we'll just make sure you get a good job then, which has always led to a fight. Wait, he said that to her or she said it to him? He said that to her. We'll make sure you get a good job then. And that's led to a fight. She don't want to work. Right. She right? doesn't want she, a, a fight on her end. Right. Yelling and crying. Oh, no. I have to do the adult thing and take care of myself. That's how that sounds that's to exactly me. That's exactly how that sounds. That is how that sounds. She's, it really comes across to me as if she's fishing for validation that she's wanted. Yeah, it's And not, he's not giving it to her. That's how it started for me. I don't believe that's the case yeah. anymore. This is purely transactional for her. This is yeah. her trying to make sure that she's taken care of. And that's as far as it goes. Yeah. All right, continuing on. It always leads to a fight, yelling and crying, and just him saying the same thing over and over again and not wanting to discuss it further. Right, because I'm not going to argue with you about this. I do that to the children. I will repeat my same sentence over and over again because this is it. You're not getting a different answer out of me. We're not going to problem solve this a different way. When I'm ready for marriage, then we can discuss about getting married. Until then, I am with you. I want to build a life with you. He said two years. Give it two years. That could have been a shut up answer. Could have been. Or it could have been, my life is in chaos right now and I need to wait for things to settle down before I considered making a major life step like that. If I was a man and this was the case, I would not marry that woman. I agree. You know why I would not marry that woman? Because I know that in the event that things fell apart, she would be the type of woman that would absolutely try to destroy my life. Oh, yeah. Or dip out real quick. Take everything. Yeah. Yep. Because she's more concerned about... Her. Her. This is all her, yeah. Right. And, and using the marriage as an insurance policy. Right. As a security net. Yep. If you fuck me over, you get fucked over too. It is a lot. It's a lot. 
Continuing on. After my <laughs> hang on. Okay. How many people do you think hear hear these these episodes that are like this and go, I'm definitely not sending an email now? <laughs> <laughs> if I know a lot of women email in thinking that I'm just going to hype them up and back them up with whatever they got going on. Yeah. If that's what you believe, you're in for a very rude awakening. I, I'm not going to sit here and validate your insecurities or tell you that you acting crazy in that moment is justified because you were triggered. Right. This email comes across as very selfish. I agree. A marriage is not about, well, now you're stuck with me. You can't run amok. It's not, you guys don't even move into a different state. I thought he was move. I thought you guys were going overseas. Is that what it said? They're just going to a different state? They're going state? to a different state. There are certain countries I would go to by myself. Like. Yeah. We bought our tickets to Thailand today, guys. We did. Yeah. <laughs> Plane tickets have been purchased. I, you're a wee little lass. You, you are, you are still, I, I'm going to be honest under 25. I still view you as a child. Me under 25. I was still very much a child trying to figure out how to be an adult. I'm 43 and still trying to figure that shit out. You have your life together, babe. Uh, I like to believe I do, but I'm still navigating shit. Right. But you're doing it with an adult perspective. That's what I meant. Yep. All right, continuing on. After my friends brought this up again, I just felt drained. I'm tired. I'm heartbroken. You're breaking your own heart. I'm going to say that, sweetheart. You're breaking your own heart here. My, my friend should not be concerned about whether or not I'm getting married. I can understand the worry. They might be parental figures to her, but she's calling them friends. They're not like mom and dad. You are my friends, and I, I appreciate your advice, but your advice is not helping me. It's just worsening my mental state. Right. I need to talk to my man, and him and I need to figure this out. I would appreciate it if we don't talk about this again. Absolutely. That is the conversation. <laughs> and I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. I'm just trying to be polite right now. Yep. I hate the kids with that, too. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Please go clean your bedroom. Yep. All right, continuing on. I am heartbroken. My values have always been to marry and be a good wife, to have a family. I never even planned on moving in with whoever I was dating until we were married. For him, it's been different. I'm okay with it. Or I was okay with it. Did she say I was okay with it? I was okay, okay. with it. But moving to a whole nother state for someone I'm not even married to. I love him. I love him so much, but I'm so hurt and unsure. And you shouldn't have moved in with him if you didn't say we're getting married. It, there's a reason people have boundaries. And people, when they get into a state when they're like, how the fuck did I get here? You can look back and pinpoint it's when I moved in with him. I knew better. That was the first time you crossed your own boundaries for this man. And because you crossed your own boundary does not mean that he now needs to step up and marry you to make you comfortable. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Was that super shitty? Nope. It's, okay. it's important to recognize that not everybody's meant to be with each other. Right. <clears throat> All right. Continuing on. I visibly couldn't hide it and he could tell I was off the next day. I tried to tell him it was nothing, but he kept pestering me. Oh, no. Asking what was wrong. Yeah. I didn't want to bring it up again, as we always fought about it. And I didn't believe this time would be any different. But finally, I told him I don't want to argue over it again. Immediately, he fell silent, and he, I knew he knew what I was talking and thinking about. I didn't say anything else. He finally said, is it about the whole getting married thing again? I end up telling him it was. I could already see him getting annoyed. He was scowling and refusing to look at me. Why can't you just be patient with me? He asked. Annoyance very clear in his voice. I too would be annoyed.
I'm going to be honest. I would have walked away at this point. The third time of being asked, so when are we getting married? I've already told you to be patient with me. The next time you ask me, our relationship is over. I feel like you are pressuring me into something that I am not ready for, and it's making me very uncomfortable. What if this was a man talking to a woman, and instead of marriage, it was sex? Everyone would lose their fucking minds. There you go. That's rape. Everyone would be shouting, that's rape. So continuing on, usually at this point, I would get upset as that was always his response. But I was so drained and tired that I was just emotionless. emotionless. I knew the answer. We had this fight so many times. So I was just... So I was very matter of fact when I spoke to him. I don't even know if you want to marry me, I end up saying. At this point, I just think you don't want to marry me and that's the issue. And if that is, then tell me now, please, before I uproot my entire life to follow you somewhere I don't need to be. After saying that, he got upset. We had been on the bed and he clenched his fist, pressing them into his eyes. Why can't you just be patient, he yelled at me. I was planning on proposing this year and getting married by the end of the year. Our chat has been saying that since the beginning of this email. It's right there. Dude, what if this whole elaborate proposal was planned and he's saving for something? Yep. <clears throat> I just wanted to keep this a surprise and not ruin this. Do you know how hard it's been for me to not tell you? I have a gorgeous ring picked out and everything. You would think you'd be happy to hear something like this, but I wasn't. Of course you weren't. I just felt numb. I couldn't be happy or pleased. I just felt defeated. Yeah, because you ruined your own fucking engagement. You did. She 100% did ruin her own engagement by self-sabotaging. To satiate whatever was going on inside of her. That poor man. His last name and his word are the two things you get on the wedding day and neither were good enough for her because she wanted everything else. Right now. I want it the way I want it. Yeah. Continuing on, she says, I don't want the details. I told him that, still just emotionless, not angry, upset. I just wanted to know something because everything you said has made me think you just don't want to marry me. Can you please just try to understand where I'm coming from? At no point did he say anything that has made us feel like he doesn't want to marry you. He said, be patient. Yeah. Even if he said, I'm not ready to get married. That's not yet. a no. Right. That's I want, not a no. I see it in my future, just not my immediate future. I love you. Want it one day. We're not there yet. Yep. This is adult conversation. Mm -hmm. You want to do adult shit like getting married? You need to fucking act like an adult. Right. This is very... 13, 14 year old mindset, emotional reaction versus adult logical response. Continuing on, he was already upset at this point and just shook his head saying, I already told you I wanted to marry you at some point. I didn't say anything after that. I didn't feel it was necessary. Okay, but is it true that he said that? If he has... Even once, he said it one time and never said it again, saying, he said, I already told you I wanted to marry you at some point. Those words left his mouth, and that is true. He said, I want to marry you at some point. Just be patient with me. I don't understand how that can be taken any other way. If I were him and I'm annoyed and I'm emotional, I would view that as you are willingly ignoring what I am saying to sulk. You're choosing to feel this way out of whatever you're going through. To get your way. Right. Trying to manipulate me to get your way. That's how I would view that. Oh my goodness. I would have started sobbing. I was, if I had been going through all of that anxiety and all of that worry and I'm not good enough and this man is going to end up leaving me, like I had had those thoughts. The day that I asked you, are you still in love with me? That's all the shit that I was thinking. And you brought me a ring.
if I were her and he hit me with, I was going to propose to you this year, I would have said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I did all of this. I'm sorry that I'm so insecure. I'm sorry that I have pushed for this. I'm sorry that I've been manipulating you. And I'm sorry that I've ruined this for you. I've ruined this for us. I would feel like absolute shit. That engagement does matter for a lot of people, it especially does. if they've gone as far as to pick the ring out. They want that special moment for themselves. <clears throat> yep. All right. Continuing on. I didn't say anything after that. I didn't feel it was necessary. He was upset and didn't want to talk. It seemed, or at least it didn't seem like he was going to. After a few minutes, he told me he was going to take a shower. I haven't brought it up since other than a few offhanded jokes about being married, which he always rolled his eyes at or would make comments about how we aren't married yet. I've stopped making those jokes or comments. Because they weren't jokes. They were digs. Right. Those are one-liners. That's that's poking. That's intentional. That That's bringing it up without bringing it up. It's manipulation. It's passive-aggressively bringing up the conversation. Yeah. I've kind of gotten sadder as a month has passed. I spoke with a friend the other day. I admitted to her that even if he did propose before we moved, I honestly don't know what I would say. Then why are you fucking emailing us? I'm, I'm done with this. I'm sorry. I can't finish this email. I am now super frustrated. I am, I, I'm not going to move this out of here. Maybe we can revisit this again another time and try to finish this. Um... If this, if my man, if my man, if my son was with a woman like this and he came to me and said, I had all of this plan and she won't stop doing this. And now I don't know what to do. And I, I feel like I'm fucking failing. And like, I was going to propose to her and she just keeps nagging me. And I've asked her for patience. This woman is not respecting your boundaries. Yeah, this is not the one son. This ain't it. I'm uh, son. You're dodging a bullet. You ever heard your mama talk to me like that? No. What does that tell you? This ain't it. Have you ever seen any type of behavior like this between me and your mother? No. No? Then right. this ain't it. Old me, every man that was with me before I evolved dodged a fucking bullet. I was, I was already an alcoholic. I was already manipulative. I was already vindictive. I was very selfish and self-centered. And if I did not have the epiphany that I had and change the course of my life, I would 100% be a miserable 50-year-old woman still drinking, probably getting my ass beat. Like, and I, I would, I would, I would not be a good person. I would spit venom. I would be miserable and I would hate anybody who was happy. There was already a tinge of that in me. I would see a happy couple on Facebook be like, fuck you guys. Bet they're cheating. This, right. ain't, this ain't real. Nobody's happy like that. Right. People say that about us. <laughs> they do say that about us. So now I'm going to take a deep breath. Miserable fuckers. And I'm going to end this with, sweetheart, you are the problem here. You self-sabotaged, you ruined your own engagement, and there are some things that you just can't come back from. And if I were him, I would not plan on marrying you. Because even when he told you, I, I had everything planned out, I was going to propose to you later this year, that wasn't good enough for you. She then said that she doesn't even know if she would accept even if he did propose. So what are we arguing about at this point? What are you what are you bitching about at this point? You are far too young to be talking like this, sweetheart. Far too young to have this kind of mindset. This is the kind of mindset that I get from 50-year-old women yeah. who are pissed off at men and all of these other things. Like, even if he did propose, I don't know what I would say. Absolutely wild. 
normally after we have an email like this, I'm like, let's do a love story or a thank you to end on a positive note. I'm done. But we're two hours and 30 minutes in before edits and you haven't eaten yet. And I have to do the garden segment in an hour and 20 minutes. Well, it gives you time to eat and relax and smoke and vibe. Are you going to bring Carrie on and, and sit and talk with Carrie? Have you mm -hmm. talked to her about that? No, yet? I haven't. <laughs> I actually totally forgot about that. For those of you who watched the garden episode that comes live in, at 4 p.m. Eastern time, uh, you may get to finally see who Carrie is because we're going to try to throw her in front of a camera today. Joke's on you. Ha! <laughs> that email really upset me. I know it did. It, it, I would be so disapp disappointed in our daughter. Yeah. So disappointed in her. I did not raise you that way. And I, I understand that that was not her household. She came from a really fucked up home. A lot of traumatic things happened. If you were my daughter and I raised you the way that I raised my daughter and you <clears throat> behaved this way, I would be very disappointed in you. Yeah. That childhood shit is just an excuse if you haven't started doing the work. Right. People will wait and they'll use that their entire lives. Well, I had a bad childhood. You've had the rest of your life to correct the behavior, though, and you haven't done it yet. Yeah. Once your childhood is no longer half of my life ago. It's not an excuse. If you're 50 and you're like, my childhood was shit, bro, that was like 30 years ago. If you're 25 and you're like, my childhood was shit, I could see that. Yeah. Half of your life ago, you were still a young teenager. Like, I could see how that, that effect is, the fallout is still affecting you. Let's wrap this up so I can figure out what the green line issue is okay. before you do your garden thing. Uh, guys, with that being said, remember you are the author of your own life. So grab a pen. And we will see you on the next one. Bye, guys.